Let's get Chad Millman's take on the games on the action. From the Action Network, Chad Millman, their chief content officer, and he joins us now on the Boardwalk Honda Hotline. Smash it, smash it, smash it. Chad, <laughs> how are you? I'm good, brother. Happy New Year. Same to you. It's good to uh, talk to you again. I missed you a couple of times while I was off, but it feels like old times here. We got playoff football, though. And, uh, man, some very intriguing lines to start this thing off, man. I look at this uh, Saturday slate. I got Buffalo and the Colts. And right off the bat, I'm like, man, Buffalo's given a touchdown. They, they're they really putting a lot of faith in the Bills in this. Uh, you know, I know they made the playoffs last year, but you're a touchdown favorite over a good Colts defense. Yeah, I think what you're getting here really is a little bit of public perception. Um, the Bills just being so dominant the past, say, five, six weeks of the season. And while you say the Colts have a good defense, they do statistically have a good defense. But they're not great in the sort of stats that betters like to look at, number one. Number two, Phillip Rivers hasn't been healthy. And we've seen sort of the challenges that he has. He's already pretty immobile. You give Phillip Rivers an injured toe, and that affects everything that he does as a passer. Um, And then you put a guy who's a little bit older, and I don't say this to be glib, he's older, and you put him in cold weather, and that just makes it more challenging. So I think there's a lot of factors here. Part of it is the Colts not being as good as the numbers represent and the Bills being uh, quite outstanding the last few weeks. Yeah, that one's uh, an interesting one. It's very contrast of styles. you got a good offense against a really good defense. The Colts' offense struggles. The Bills' defense struggles. Uh, total on that one, 51, 51 and a half. Could be uh, an interesting play there as well. So that's your early game. You can hear it here on 97.3 ESPN. Got that middle game. Started at four and a half. Dropped down to three. Rams, Seahawks. I know the Rams had some COVID issues. Um, I think Cup might play. Goff has the thumb problem. So uh, how do you read in that point-and-a-half line drop? I don't get it, man. I do not get it. I know that all the wise guys love the Rams, and I know that they all look at the way these guys play, these two teams, and they're always very close. They're always within a field goal, and I don't know if they're just thinking like precedent plays or what. Um, I'm kicking myself because I think I took the Seahawks at three and a half and clearly I could have gotten them at three. Um, Like the Seahawks, the last nine weeks of the year have 36 sacks, more sacks than anybody in the NFL. Uh, The Seahawks are a lot different than the Arizona Cardinals uh, who the Rams played last week, uh, who their backup quarterback played last week. Jared Goff, if he does play, does not stand up well to pressure and the Seahawks have also figured out they're a really good running team. And when they got all the running backs back healthy, um, they started to really play well. And also on the flip side, the Rams defense is really good. um, But I don't know that they're going to be able to move the ball very effectively. So give me the Seahawks. And also, by the way, I like the under. How about Tom Brady going on the road to Washington, who snuck in in the bad division? Uh, the spread is around eight, seven and a half in some places. And let's also factor in some bulletin board material from Chase Young. Yeah, you know, let's factor in that Alex Smith is questionable. That, to me, is the only thing that matters when we're talking about the side. I love Alex Smith. We've talked about this on the show. Uh, I, I think of him as Alex Smith, professional football quarterback he's just good like everywhere he's been he's been good and made the team around him better and we were seeing that in Washington a couple years ago before he was injured so if if I think he is playing I'm going to be on Washington at plus eight and a half I also in this game another one the under is 44 and a half right now I like the under Uh, if he's not playing I don't know how Washington scores um They're not very effective offensively, but also like Chase Young, you mentioned the bulletin board material. Tom Brady's two and two with seven, seven touchdowns and five interceptions against top 10 pass rushing defenses. That's what the Washington football team is. He's 0 and four against top 10 defenses overall. That's what the Washington Mm -hmm. football team is. So um, there's a lot of reasons I like Washington and I like the under. Yeah. And uh, Tom Brady first road wild card 
game here, and it's a uh, he's a touchdown favorite on a road on the road here. Uh, this feels like one of those games where everyone laughed at the NFC East all year, and at seven and nine, Washington's another one of these seven and nine playoff teams. It's like, yeah, you're not laughing now. You know, sacks galore, interception return for a touchdown. I kind of feel you on that one. Ravens Titans. Yeah. Um, this game last year, you know, this up to 55 uh, is the total. Three and a half, it really hasn't moved much there. I mean, I don't know, same same scenario as last year, just too much running from the Titans? Yeah, I like I liked the Titans here. I like the underdog. I like the underdog at home. You've got Derrick Henry. You've got a way to control the ball. You've got Ryan Tannehill, who, you know, in two years, he's just not a fluke. Like, he knows how to play well in that offense, and he knows how to pick his spots. Like, he's very efficient. He doesn't turn the ball over. But he's not efficient like, oh, hey, it's Trent Guilford game management efficient to throw an ancient reference out there. It's like Ryan Tannehill, who knows that his bread is buttered with Derrick Henry, and Arthur Smith, who knows that Derrick Henry is a once-in-a-generation running back. But Ryan Tannehill can thread the needle when he has to and has a really good arm. So um, this Titans team in the playoffs, to me, feels dangerous. Uh, Lamar Jackson, despite being as talented as he is, hasn't shown up in big games. And so I'm not about to back him on the road as a favorite when I haven't seen out of him uh, what I think you need to do to extend to the next level in the playoffs. The Saints are at home favored by 10 against the Bears. A lot of discussion about Mitch Trubisky and the offense playing better as of late, but will it be enough? No, they're terrible. They're a terrible team. Uh, I say this. As a Chicago fan who last night at dinner, my kid asked me, uh, what would you trade for Deshaun Watson? I said I would trade Khalil Mack and our next three first-round picks because you <laughs> cannot win without, without a uh, – I don't know if you guys know, you know Danny Parkins, who's a radio guy in Chicago. He had a tweet today, like, what would you trade for Deshaun Watson? He said the next eight number one picks, and then he listed the eight number one picks the Bears had had, and I would have traded all of them for Deshaun Watson. Makes sense. Um, Here's the problem. Here's the problem. Ten points is a lot. Uh, it's just a lot. And it's too much if I'm looking at a Bears team that is down, say, 17 points with three minutes left, and they know that the Saints know the game is out of hand, and Mitch Trubisky finds a way to hit Darnell Mooney for a long pass that gets him into scoring position, and they score a touchdown. So a little bit too rich for me in terms of a betting the Saints. So at, at ten points, I do have to back the Bears. Chad Millman, Action Network. These are the lines for the NFL Super Six, Super Sunday, Super Wild Card Weekend, whatever the heck you want to call it. Um, by the way, you know what's going to happen. You should feel good. Trubisky's going to stink. They're going to put Foles in, and he's going to win you a Super Bowl. It's Nick Foles' playoff time. And if that happens, by the way, I am totally fine with it. Those things are so rare. They're so precious. They're so special. You guys know this in South Jersey. Look, I do the, I do the, the favorites podcast with a guy named Simon Hunter, who's from South Jersey, right? And he is a huge Eagles fan. And we were talking about this on the podcast the other day, like the opportunity to get a Super Bowl. The, uh, this is, you know, basically you'll hear that the only thing I talk about my kid with is the Bears. He, uh, he asked me the other day, if we had to keep Mitch Trubisky and win a Super Bowl this year or get rid of him, uh, I would say keep him because they're so rare. You, you never get them. Um, so if this is what happens, this is what happens. All right, last game on the card. It is uh, Brown Steelers open three and a half, jump to six when I guess the COVID stuff. 47 is the over under. Steelers have been a weird play. Browns, I don't know, do I trust them after an 18 year hiatus to not have their coach? Uh, is six a nice number? Yeah, I would bet it up to seven. Um, I'm surprised it actually hasn't moved there. 77% of the bets, 62% of the money coming in on the Steelers. Um, obviously, when it opened, it moved it opened to three and a half, moved fast to five and a half once uh, the COVID news was announced. So I, I'd still be back in the Steelers here. The Browns, look, 11 wins, it's a big year for them, and it's amazing they made the playoffs and, and kudos. But they also had a negative point differential. Um, so they scored fewer points than um, their opponents this year. They did that with 11 wins last week against this team, a Mason Rudolph team. They were outgained by the Steelers offensively and only won by two points. So um, I don't have a lot of hope right now for the Browns. All right. Chad Millman, Action Network. You can uh, check out all the lines for everything, college basketball, uh, the national championship game, NBA, and, of course, all the NFL. Your favorite play of the six games this weekend is? 
Let's do Washington football, Tampa Bay Buccaneers under 44 and a half. Washington football under. Okay, I like that. I, I see like 22-6, 22-9, something like in that range there. Although I wouldn't be surprised if Washington won that game. There you go. He likes wow, you th- I was going to say, you think Washington's going to beat Tampa by 13 points? No, no, no. I, I, I like Tampa. I'm, like t- I'm kidding. Yeah, I'm okay. Kidding. But I wouldn't be surprised if, Tam- if, if Washington actually won that game. So there you go. That's uh, his favorite play of the weekend. Check out all the lines, the, the uh, action over at actionnetwork.com. And, of course, uh, you can listen to all the games right here on 97.3 ESPN. So smash them, Washington. Do it. Under. Chad, take care. You, great talking to you, fellas.